An Open Letter to My Workaholic Father Dad, I grew up thinking you were awesome, that you were my hero, that you really cared about me, and you were the one that I could turn to. And this was true in a relative sense, because compared to narcissistic mom, you were the second coming of Christ. But to see you as a hero, I had to overlook a whole lot of bullshit. I didn't even know you until you and mom split up, and you came to see me on court-ordered visitation days. Prior to this, you were always busy, either with work or school. Too busy for me. I remember going to the school where you taught and wondering why you were nicer to your students than you were to me, your own daughter. I remember you working on a school project in the backyard. You were making a model volcano that I couldn't play with. And I wondered why you never did any projects with me. Well, once you were out of the house, suddenly you had time for me and things that we could do together. So that's what I clung to. But you always did the least that you had to do. When my mother remarried and we had moved away, you sent me a letter saying, you have a new dad now, so I'll step out of the way. And signed it not dad, but by your first name. What the fuck was that? Like this clown was going to replace you in my life? Oh, I let you have it with both barrels. And I moved in with you the very first chance I got. But still the idiot stepfather messed with my head when he tried to have sex with me. And I told you all about it after it happened. But did you do the right thing? No. You did the easy thing. You should have gotten me into counseling because it messed me up far more than I could ever have imagined. You kept it covered up because you have no paternal instinct. Every step of the way, you made my narcissistic mother possible. When you were in the cult of Landmark, at least you were trying to keep the family together. But now you use Landmark to make me wrong for calling it how I see it. The issue wasn't about you having lunch with my sister, the golden child, because you can have lunches with her for days until the cows come home. The issue was that you blurted this out to me, knowing that it would upset me, because you prefaced it with, I probably shouldn't tell you this, but... So the issue was your gross insensitivity toward me, then you had the audacity to get mad at me for being upset. When I complained that Golden Child's sister didn't give a flying fuck about me, your reply was this. Some people are assholes. Don't you be an asshole. The implication being that I was being an asshole. So is there any surprise that I haven't spoken to you since? It would be one thing if, while you were having lunch with her, you did something to help bridge the gap between her and I. But your mother and her eight sisters all hated each other, so you live in a world where it's normal for sisters to hate each other, and you are perfectly fine with that. You told me that if I felt that way, I should talk to her myself. But in saying that, you turn a deaf ear to everything I've told you since 2010, that she wouldn't listen to me, and then she threw me under the bus. So if you want to have relationships with people who are toxic to me, then at least be sensitive to the pain I feel about not having a sister or a brother since he went no contact with everyone. And don't rub it in my face. The fact that you would rub that in my face, something that still breaks my heart because I really cared about my sister, even though she could be nutty and an asshole. And the fact that you would rub that in my face shows how little you know me or care about me. There are so many other things I could list, so many other ways that you weren't there for me, so many family things I would have liked to have attended, but you didn't invite me, or at least that's what your wife said when I confronted her that you would tell me about all these birthdays or celebrations, and when I would say, 
I would have liked to have been there. You would always tell me that it was a disaster and no one had any fun. So there was some kind of gaslighting going on and I didn't appreciate it then or now. Oh, and let's not forget that you gave Narcissistic Mother my home address without asking me first. Who does that? You knew about the issues I had with her and that I'd got no contact. And you couldn't take five minutes to check with me first? I do feel kind of conflicted because you're an old man now and some of these issues could be attributed to age. But the more I reflect on our family history, the more I see that it's not actually a case of you not being the man you used to be, but you were never that man to begin with. My experience was kind of like Stockholm Syndrome mixed with a good cop, bad cop scenario. I built you up as a hero because I needed to have a hero to emotionally survive, and you were all I had, so I built you up in my mind. But once the blinders were off and I saw you for who you really are, well, that simply cannot be unseen. Remember when we were traveling in Europe, when my brother and stepsister were young, and you scolded all us kids by calling us misfucks? <laughs> misfucks, meaning we should never have been born. Now, Golden Child's sister and little brother were horrified and deeply offended, but I came to your defense, insisting, no, you didn't really mean it that way, you just had a very dark sense of humor. Well, regardless of whether you meant it or not, it's a, it's a pretty shitty sperm donor indeed who thinks it's acceptable to go around calling his children misfucks. Being a workaholic father, you are as incapable of parental care as a narcissistic mother. And your love for me was never one of noble paternal protectiveness. I was nothing more than a source of narcissistic supply. And when you would tell me that I was your favorite, that was based on me being the most reliable source of narcissistic supply. But you took me for granted. The last couple of years being around you became more and more unpleasant. All you would do was complain, and maybe that's because you're an old man now and old people like to complain, but you know what? You were always a complainer. And now the substance of your complaints were quite obviously the stuff of your own making, by not thinking things through and by giving away the story to people who were quite obviously of bad intent. And the man who was once my hero became a sad and tragic figure, and that became unbearable for me. And there are a lot of people who stick around for their elderly parents, even though they're a pain in the ass, because that's what people do. But I see no benefit in being loyal to people who have no regard for my feelings nor my well-being, because empathy is a two-way street. For years now, I told you about my feelings about what led me to go no contact with narcissistic mother and golden child sister, and for years I shared with you about how this has affected me, and for years I told you about my loneliness and need for family and a support system, and your response was to use this against me, and to gaslight me, and to rub it in my face that I'm on the outside. So it's pointless to say anything more to you about anything, since this is who you have shown yourself to be. There is nothing more to say. I mean, what's the point? Would you be around people like that if they weren't your family? So what gives family a pass? If you want to be used for narcissistic supply and be gaslighted right and left by people who have no capacity for empathy because they are hollow shells, then by all means, knock yourselves out. And as sad as it is going no contact to the father I loved, it's knowing that the man I loved was an illusion. He never really was that guy. And he drove me away, just like Narcissistic Mother did. 
they were two sides of the same coin. Workaholic dad made narcissistic mother possible.